Greetings, fellow Beyonders. I'm your humble host and scribe, Sven, and this is Beyond the Worlds Beyond. The primary purpose of this series will be exploring the lore and story within these campaigns. In this episode, we'll be looking at the fourth episode of The Wizard, the Witch, and the Wild One, titled In the Drink. We'll be doing a quick summary of the episode and then diving into the lore questions that it raises and those that it answers. We return to our imperiled heroes as initiative is rolled. The shadow emerging from Captain Emlis quickly takes down Ame while Subi and Ursan rush to the fight and to her aid. Both strike the monstrosity, but it is Subi, with two barrages of magical missiles, who mortally wounds the host body of Emlis and seems to disperse the shadow entity that emerged from it. While Ursulan gathers Ame in his arms to heal her, Subi attends to the captain. First, assuming that she was a victim of possession, but upon inspection, learning that the captain was a Ruvian agent known as a Chalice, and that she was a willing participant in the possession and the combat. Subi promptly slits the throat of the unconscious woman. This brings us to the first major conflict between our newly reunited old friends. Ame wishes to perform burial rites for the captain, despite her brush with near death, as Emlis was still a person and thus deserving of such. Subi wishes, and succeeds, at coldly discarding the body overboard. No mercy for their enemies or the enemies of the Empire. With Suvi's authority as a wizard of the Citadel placating the crew over the death of their not-exactly-beloved captain, the ship continues and our heroes finally arrive in Port Talon. The city is much more fortified, physically and mystically, than Ursulan remembers, but they encounter little issue as they travel through to the shop owned by Finley. Here, thwarted briefly by an unlocked door, they finally find Finley, recently murdered, and realize sounds they heard were likely the escape of the culprit. Now, for the second time of the episode, they find themselves around a recently killed body as we draw to a close for this week. Before we start asking new questions, let's take a look at the ones we've asked before and see which, if any, we now have answers for. Obviously, it was quickly answered as to the nature of Captain Emlis. Not only was it not related to the curse, but Ame was a target of convenience. The true target was likely Suvi. Uh, it seems that Emlis, as a Rubian agent, was likely intending to infiltrate Port Talon, but decided to strike at a wizard and her companions when the target presented itself. While we did not learn more directly about the Sorcerers of Ruv, we now know that some of the Ruvian agents are vessels for other entities, willingly possessed but still, at least partly, under their own control, as the captain seemed normal until she released the shadow to attack. The fact that the contained entity was a shadow does suggest that, among the Sorcerers, shadow is a likely subclass, though that is an assumption at this point. As for new questions, the most obvious, and likely next to be answered, is who killed Finley and why? Also, did the murderer abscond with Wavebreaker? Had Finley already sold it, or is it still somewhere on the premises? If the murderer did take the sword, did they know of its importance, or was it simply a theft of convenience? As to poor Talon, what has been happening, or is anticipated to happen, that has led to the increase in their defenses? The war has always been ongoing, and it did not seem like it had been many years since Ursulan traded away the sword, so it's not merely that they are at war. Either there has been a recent conflict, or there is the anticipation of an attack. Also speaking of these defenses, is Ursulan less impacted by Witchfire due to his inability to return to the spirit realm, or are they not truly that potent and likely more for peace of mind than actual defense in this case? Would a spirit within a chalice be banished, or is that the intent of the chalices, not just to be able to sneak into enemy locations, but to shield the spirits they bear from such mystical defenses? That one will likely be a long time in getting answered, but I still wonder nonetheless. Uh, also, what was the structure out at sea? Obviously some sort of magical uh, structure construction going on, uh, but we don't yet know what that is. And, of course, finally, what will come of the conflicts between our beloved cast of characters? Will they address and work out these differences, or will they let them continue to simmer and chafe until they boil over into a full-grown argument or fight? That's all for this installment of Beyond the Worlds Beyond. As always, please feel free to throw your own questions and theories in the comments, as I love hearing what others latched on to. I've been your host, Sven, and thank you very much for listening. Farewell.
for now, fellow Beyonders.